Yeah. Yes. Good. Yeah. Going for a full screen here. Um, right. Best ever Christmas bird count. All of you who were there will know. Um, I was so excited at Widgeon Sue. So these are these are tears of joy running down my cheeks. Um, and it was also, of course, incredibly hot. So we were all sweating out that day too. Um, and uh, the reason being that you know it was just such beautiful weather uh, that you know it's the one we're gonna. A lot of us will remember for a very long time. Um, I just wanted to say. <laughs> this shows the extreme efforts that some of our um, area leaders go to to keep the, the trails open. This is Ian MacArthur. It actually is Ian MacArthur. Now, admittedly, it's the day after the count. Um, I ran into him on Burke Mountain. It was the weirdest coincidence. I was running, he was trail clearing. And um, anyway, uh, this just shows the dedication of the BMNers to uh, making mm. uh, the outdoors work for everybody. Wow. Oh, okay. Okay, so there's our, our count circle, the same as always. These are, uh, we, we and the other 2,000 or so counts ac across North America and, and other places in the world always have the standard Audubon circle. And uh, the circle is um, typically, what is it now? It's 30 miles in diameter. This one has been going a long time. It was first created um, <clears throat> uh, to be centered over in Pitt Meadows. And so we are responsible for the uh, left side of the river here. And then our friends in the Alouette Field Naturalists do the ones over on the, uh, on the right side. And then we compile all of the results. And it's great that Jennifer, the overall count compiler, could be with us. It's kind of a funny count. We actually run it completely independently on each side of the river and then put it together. It's almost like two counts that then get mashed together. Oops. So there's the news. Um, this is the, the updated tally. I should say Victoria um, kindly prepared these slides. She's our data keeper, as well as, as being the organizer for the uh, west side of the river. And so I really appreciate Victoria having put uh, these together for me. We've kind of got it down to a bit of a, a double act formula over the years. So we had 64 species this year. You can see that it was a considerable dip over our usual uh, expectation. Our average is normally 83. So a big drop, the biggest drop since the full count um, uh, got underway in 1998. 62 people is also about 20 people short. The BMM did not want to promote this too heavily this year uh, because of COVID. It's not an official BMN event, but um, so that we had fewer people out. It wasn't advertised, didn't get new people in, but and some people were much smaller teams. I, I was a team of one in Widgeon Marsh uh, this year. The other people weren't able to join me as usual. So we definitely uh, saw a big drop in the number of species counted. And um, one of the things that the compilers send into the Audubon Society is the weather. And so when scientists are analyzing these data, they're not going to think that there was a sudden ca catastrophic drop in bird populations in, in the circle. Um, they will control for weather and number of people. And then that might, you know, bring us back into more of an average sort of zone. So the number of species in the top three areas, we always like to compare those. So De Beauville Slough in green at the top, as usual, uh, is uh, number one. Uh, they've got lots of great habitat, lots of keen participants, and uh, they, they've got good variety of habitats is, is actually key here to um, any group's success. Then we have Colony Farm East and West. And this is interesting. Oh, sorry, Colony Farm East. Wait, why have I got Coquitlam River here? I think that's, that's meant to because say. we came in third, John. Really? <laughs> yes. How is that possible? Good birders. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Victoria, I totally missed that. That's yes. fantastic. Yeah. No, Coquitlam Farm West was way behind. Wow, that is <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. The um, and it's interesting that you know. Coquitlam River and Colony Farm East both seem to be unaffected from what we can see by the weather. I know it was miserable to be out there, but um, I wonder if part of it is that there are a lot of water birds in these counts, which are still countable. The, the thing about rain, it, it's not just the rain, it was also the wind, right? We had incredible wind and wind is just deadly for detecting birds. So the combination for most areas was incredible, but that's fantastic. And congratulations to the, the Coquitlam River crew for um, uh, doing extremely well this year. Um, so let's go back to, let's make a more full comparison of our two colony farm teams. They, <coughs> excuse me, they divide the area on each side of the Coquitlam River. And 
Here's Colony Farm West and Colony Farm East. These are their tallies. They both took a little bit of a hit. And um, uh, so kind of what we would expect. And as people know, they've been very, tend to be neck and neck on each side of the river over time. Um, and Colony Farm West did a bit better this year as they, they often get a couple more species. And as hummingbirds didn't like the day either. And um, I feel like I should have put an umbrella over that, that bird's head. Um, and of course, again, this is just because they're not out and about in this kind of weather. And um, so they were keeping their heads down as any sensible um, bird would. And I um, have no doubt that uh, next year when we do this, if the weather's okay, you know, they're gonna bounce right back up on the same sort of upward trajectory that they've been on for the last uh, 15 years or so. So, I mean, there's lots of them still. I mean, I'm. My birds are out singing. They're going to be nesting soon if they aren't already. Um, wonderful success story for the increase of these birds through the winter. Uh, just a couple of highlights then, and I'm not going to give that many because frankly there weren't that many highlights. Uh, <laughs> I've got some examples of birds uh, that certain areas saw that no other area saw. So De Beauville, um, mute swans, I would, I am, are these the ones? I, I saw Jay's on the call. Uh, I could ask Jay. I can't see you, Jay, because this is full screen for me. But I'm guessing these are the ones by the um, the little um, marina there on right on De Beauville Slough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. John, I didn't. I wasn't on the on that card. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. They are the ones by the marina. We've seen them quite a bit this year. I got it. Okay. And they happen to be fed by the marina owner quite regularly. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, there aren't that many around the city. I mean, this time of year, they're more likely to be trumpeter swans. And, and uh, so we actually don't have that many mute swans, especially ones that are truly, you know, free flying. And uh, I don't know if they've ever bred there. I've never seen them with, with young. Um, but anyway, that was great. They also got um, shoveler, the only shovelers and, I, and a peregrine falcon. And these <laughs> photos are not from the count. These are ones I just took from the web just to illustrate the species. Um, and then, uh, interestingly, Coquitlam River, if I, unless I missed something, Victoria, you and your team got the only pileated woodpecker of the day. Mm. Yes, that was uh, Susan Lundell who got it. She does north of the Patricia Bridge up to David. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, that's surprising. That was actually <laughs> that we, in my garden. Really? Oh, oh nice. Um, uh, it's, in, it's in my area. I back on to that. So... Yeah, perfect. Yeah, it's funny because it um, we, we normally get a bunch of them, and uh, but uh, again, it was a it was an it was a strange day, and so um, it's great that you were able to get it at all. It would have been quite something if we <laughs> had managed to miss that species um, uh, this year. So that was interesting. That that was so uncommon. Normally, you know, you hear them too, right? And uh, the birds weren't making a lot of noise, and they were pretty hard to hear as well. Minnacotta. Um, this is a photo by wow. uh, Lussier of, um, they actually had a pair of, or two sandhill cranes on the, uh, on the pond at Minnacotta, which is a good bird. I mean, we know they're kind of around, you know, they're up by Grant Narrows and, um, you know, they're in these, the general area, but we don't get them all that often on the Christmas count. So it's, um, that's one we would never take for granted. And of course it's a sandhill crane. So. Beautiful bird to have any time. So that was nice, nice to find. And we can all wish them luck if they try to breed again this year. Um, we've got a few of these um, breeding pairs in the lower mainland, and uh, they've certainly been facing some challenges in, uh, in breeding successfully at Minakata. They've got a good protected area out there in the marsh. So well protected from people and disturbance anyway. Colony Farm uh, East. So Lee's group um, got the customary um, uh, look at a barn owl, and uh, that which is great. It's one of the very significant um, breeding birds that we have in Colony Farm, and uh, that sort of old field habitat, that open field, is what they need to hunt, and uh, and that's one reason why the habitats in Colony Farm are so important um, for these uh, for these species. Okay, and I'm now going to just jump straight into the photo contest. By the way, we're not going to have a uh, the traditional um, worst miss award. Um, you know, I normally name and shame someone and a group, and they have to walk up 
you know, to accept. Thank, thank you, John. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're quite welcome. We all do. Uh, <laughs> yes, everybody's probably thinking, it, it, you know, could it be me? Could it be me? Um, but honestly, I think we'd all get the con, all get it, because when I look down the spreadsheet of looking for mm -hmm. a gap, um, I see gaps everywhere. And um, I will say, in my, in I got to say, I found a chickadee today. Uh, not that that day, I mean. Uh, I have missed black cap chickadee, I think, on two occasions at Minakata. Um, so I did the traditional high five and rain dance when I managed <laughs> to hear one. <laughs> one black cap chickadee, and they don't come in ones either, which is also interesting. So, um, so we're going to we're going to hold that one over. We can doubly shame somebody next year if the weather is good. Uh, so we have um, uh, birds. These are the categories: birds, wet, other, and fake. And um, we had our uh, committee of experts from the National Geographic Society, Audubon Society, and <laughs> eBird um, all weighing in, about 60 people all together, you know, with a very complicated judging algorithm that we use. And, uh, and the result of that is that uh, we've whittled it down to two or three examples of uh, the shortlist for each of those categories. And again, I want to thank um, the, um, our lead judge and head of the panel and chief executive director of that panel, uh, Victoria, for all of her help in this. Okay, so birds, cut right to the chase. Here are our two contenders for best bird. Mm -hmm. We have um, uh, a bush tit. You know, when they look straight at you like that, they look pretty darn scary, actually. Like, imagine if that was a wow. large bird, mm -hmm. right? Um, for a cute bird, they do have a way of giving you the, the evil eye. And um, Jolene is something of a, of a maestro at uh, getting great mm -hmm. photos of the birds. So I'm pleased that um, she's come through again. And this is a, a, a wonderful shot of the bird Thanks, straight okay. at us there. And then Susan Lundahl um, somehow came up with this, uh, with this dipper. And boy, that sure looks like it must have been awfully close. I don't know if you're out there, um, Susan, but uh, what, you want to just tell us where it was and how that came about? Um, it was in the salmon spawning channel beside the Coquitlam River. And, um, well, I wasn't super close. I had a, a bit of a zoom, but I was pretty close. I was stalking it. <laughs> oh, that's great. You know, in, in that light, I mean, I think both photographers deserve a lot of credit for getting such crisp photos and such low yeah. light. So, mm -hmm. like, um, those are both particularly difficult. I didn't even bring my camera out of my backpack on the day. So that, those are our two um, short lists from many uh, submissions. And so I think what we'll do is we're going to simply ask for a little bit of a cheer for each of them. And, um, and we can uh, just do one at a time. So I'm going to begin by asking um, a number of people who are voting for the bush tit, if you can just say yay. Yay! yay. yay. That sounded like a, a Toys R Us or something. Um, okay, and and the Dipper. Well, the Dipper kept it up longer. <laughs> that may be just because you're warming up. I want to go back to the. I want to go back to the Bush Tit for a, a second. Listen here, Bush Tit. Okay, now you're just being difficult. Um, <laughs> Dipper? Okay. Sounded like a tie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not just saying that because I'm trying to get yes, out of are. trouble here. Honestly, I that sounded like a toss-up. I don't think there's any point in trying to do, tease them apart. Um, They're both um, president, um, president of the BMN, uh, is that an acceptable outcome? I think it's totally acceptable, and especially as we don't have to award prizes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well spoken. You can see why you can see how he the ranks to take over the take over the operation. Them. Always one eye on the fiscal That's side right of things. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, really, both of you, congratulations, um, uh, both Jolene and Susan. Those are those are great photos. And as I said, I I didn't even try this year to take a photo. So that's great. Okay, best bird is 
in the bag for this yeah. year. Um, where are we here? Best wet. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm working your way through this category. <laughs> Some of this, well, it doesn't need much editorializing. I think, um, John Saremba's photo kind of speaks for all of us. Uh, uh, so that's one way to look at our day, and the other way is to <laughs> look at the other side of people. Here's a photo by uh, Carol Woodworth. Uh, this was in Colony Farm. And, um, and then you can see Susan has reminded us that humans aren't the only ones that suffer on a day <laughs> like that. Uh, and then, of course, we've got this photo by uh, Lena Ware. And... Um, this, the thing I like about this one is, you know, the, the, there's one person looks like they're taking their life into their hands crossing a log, and the other one's like, eh, whatever, there's a, something up there, I'm looking at a, looking at a kinglet. Oh, yeah, so, that's, I'd ignore him. Yeah, so four different uh, viewpoints on our wonderful day, and I will just go around in order, and so I'm going to begin with the... Um, Photo by um, John Saremba of the Umbrella over here. Let's hear some yays. Yay! John, I didn't know you were so ventriloquial. Um, <laughs> okay, um, and the uh, the four birders over here um, in the corner by Carol Woodworth. <laughs> hey. Hey. Hey, Carol. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's about it. <laughs> and our our poor uh, eagle up here in the corner by Susan. Okay, and the uh, dream crosser by Lena. Oh. So I think I'm hearing uh, support for Lena's photo, and um, <laughs> I'm just going to say that I do. And so congratulations <laughs> uh, on the call. Um, I, I think simply the work. resourcefulness, the resourcefulness of of stomping in what looks like a creek to get the best wet is very resourceful. I think it deserves <laughs> praise. And knocking those trees down, you know, in the yes. walk on them, pretty pretty uh, hardcore too. That's kind of thing. Ian MacArthur would do with his chainsaw. So, um, yes, that's great. I, I, as I said, I don't know. Lena, are you out there? I don't, didn't think I saw your name in the... Yeah, I'm here. Hey, well, what, so tell us the story of the photo, please. The wild day. Um, the name of the park is actually blanking in my mind right now, but maybe someone else knows. But it's, it follows the Coquitlam River, and we walked it for about an hour and didn't see a bird until the very, very end, a common merganser flew up the river and we cheered. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it's a terrific photo. And uh, yes, so congratulations. And um, your um, very expensive prize uh, will be in the mail uh, <laughs> <laughs> before the call is out. <clears throat> okay, um, good. Okay, good category and uh, best fake. We always love this. <laughs> need no introduction. Uh, where is um, and, uh, so, Paul, were you actually standing in the river? Did you put your life at risk for this? No, 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 no. Okay. I was on the dike, yeah. All right. With a safety of the telephone lines. And then Chris Thompson came out with what has to be probably potentially the best bird of the count if we can identify it. Uh, so fantastic uh, by Chris Thompson. So that's one. I have one more uh, page of best fake entry. Um, and there's one more bird here, which is this one. Now, what that is. Who can identify it? Pardon? Acorn. No, uh, not acorn. It's oh. European. A king spotted. Great spotted. Great spotted. That's right. With the, with the uh, they have uh, you know we have hairy and downy in 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 Western Europe. There's um, great spotted um, and um, <clears throat> middle and lesser. And uh, this was a big bird, kind of like the hairy woodpecker type bill, but with this um, <laughs> rump. And of course, that was there. Ah. <laughs> Victoria <laughs> <laughs> told me she could have they could have twirled that umbrella and got it the weather. 
So is that I'm Sheila a, holding her umbrella? It oh, is. Yeah. We wow. met her. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, <laughs> All right. So probably the happiest person I think I'm aware of on that day. Um, so, <laughs> all right. Let's see, folks. Um, we're now going to do the. So I'll remind you what you have. I think you, you can keep track of those three. So I'm going to begin with um, the um, Bufflehead. Um, Yays and nays for that one. Yay! Oh, good going, Paul. Yay. Okay. okay. And uh, Watercolor Wonder by uh, Chris. Yeah. Yes. yes. Beautiful image. <laughs> it is indeed. And um, great spot. Yay! Yay. Yay. Okay, I'm going to do a runoff between um, that one. Uh, um, I'm going to hear one more time for the great spotted woodpecker, please. Yay! Yes, yes, yes. Very yeah. well done. And the uh, Sharknado one. <laughs> okay, Paul, there you go. And uh, again, uh, don't drink and drive. <laughs> Finally, oh, an honorable mention. I want to throw this in. I got this photo. Laurie sent me this, and it was even smaller than that in my defense. And she sent me an email and said she wasn't sure what it was. And I looked at this blurry, distant thing. I thought, oh, God. I said, wrote back. I said, kind of looks like a red pole. And so I asked her for a bigger photo version. I managed to get it off the thing and blow it up a bit, looked at it, and I got really confused. And I think the words uh, possible purple finch crossed my mind. Of course, it's not. Um, turns out it was a, um, well, Laura, you tell us the rest of the story here. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't know if you can see me or not. Yeah. I don't think you can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I was going to call it a white wing snow finch because <laughs> I didn't actually know what it was because it's actually a bird that was maybe made in China. <laughs> they call it a migrant from China that blew in. And I just put it on a tree at Como Lake Park and took a picture. <laughs> and the weather really helped disguise it even more. <laughs> then I thought, well, I'll just see what John says about this. <laughs> and you should have been in the best about lake. It. <laughs> yeah. And I did, I did check iNaturalist, John. Oh, yes. What did they think? And so the first choice was a band-backed wren from Mexico. Oh. The second choice was a gold crest from Europe. Right. And the third was Pacific wren, West Coast. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so that was yeah. pretty fun. So, so you managed to fool us all. Uh, that was great. <laughs> Very well played. OK. Um, best other. Ah. I've got two for you. <laughs> and these both take some time to get your mind around. This is not a fake, by the way, by um, well, by either, I hope, I think. Um, uh, so you can see Lena caught, you know, the, these two who were catching a ride on, you know, drifting down river in a, a, a canoe. A vertical canoe. Yeah, and not being distracted by by the, their predicament while they're at it. Um, and then um, uh, this was taken by uh, John. Uh, that's Colony Farm, I guess. Um, now, I want to ask, what does this thing here remind you of? Bull. Bull. A bull, yeah. Bull. I'd like you to think outside the box, though. Doesn't it immediately bring something else to mind? Platypus. Mitch McConnell. <laughs> you know, when I first saw it, I thought it looked like that's <laughs> maybe Come on, what's that? You people recognize this? Yeah. It's a wolverine. Prehistoric rat. It's a rodent of unusual size. Yeah. From the Princess Bride, don't you all know that? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> that was what I honestly it was the first thing when Victoria showed it to me on Zoom, I thought that is a rodent of unusual size. Um, so 
And if you ask Guy Nat, I did the same thing Lori tried. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there was a bit of a struggle here. I'm a little disappointed okay. in you. Uh, I, okay, I'm not knowing the Princess Bride. I will play you a small clip. Um, I like the, the domestic sheep guess. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's Robin Wright. Okay, you're welcome. I <laughs> do. <laughs> That's what I thought it was, anyway. And now I can't even get anything here. How do I move on? Oh yeah, there you go. I had to see that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I can't. Uh, yeah, you can see it's a high tech, very high budget. This was by Rob Reiner, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still not sure how to move on without playing the damn video. I, I think this is <laughs> Try escape. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna end. Oh, there we go. I'll just move on and uh, get back in in a second here. So yeah, there you go. Um, that's what I thought it was. Um, and, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, we have a contest to do. Okay. <laughs> I forgot where I was going with this. <laughs> First of all, uh, uh, the um, canoe downstream by uh, Lena. I'd like to hear some enthusiasm. Okay, and the rodent of unusual size. Okay, it's a tie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's no point in the, the, Prices the, all around. Yeah, definitely. So beers on uh, on the BMM. Um, great, great photos though. Both of them are crazy, and yeah, that is a coast coast mole, um, and uh, it's the only one we have right here uh, this far out. As you go up the Fraser Valley, you get into um, a much rarer mole, a much larger mole, um, which is actually on the endangered species list, uh, but out here. It, it pretty much has to be a coast mole. So that's great. And we know about that. Oh, not that again. Okay. <laughs> Let's finish it up. Okay. We're, we're getting to the end. Uh, you'll be pleased to hear um, the dreaded ID challenge. Now, not this, usually I uncover a bird one at a time, but as you veterans of this event will remember, I also through the year, each year, save my very worst photos um, just for you. Yeah. Just and, uh, just and so yeah. I'm going to inflict them upon you, and I'm going to show you, in most cases, pairs of photos. First the bad one, and then I want to hear what you think it is, and then I will show you this. Okay? Yeah. Simple game. How about that one? <laughs> Cowbird. Cowbird. Cowbird is correct. Was Cowbird, that? Curio? What's correct? It's Cowbird. A a brown-headed cowbird. So that's a oh, female type. Um, this was um, in the Gulf Islands. There's a better look at it. I was going to say, this is from the Christmas bird count. Yeah, the, the bill is a pretty pretty good giveaway for it being a cowbird, with that very thick bill. It's in the blackbird family, um, but with that with very, uh, very thick, almost Is it crow-sized? Pardon? Is it crow-sized? No, it's the, uh, a little bit smaller than a red-winged blackbird. Okay. And a shorter sort of tails, more squat kind of thing. Yeah. So they're they're so quite small. Question. Yeah, I just like. <laughs> okay. And how about this one? This one, I must confess, I do not the have. Judgment would be on my face <laughs> than I come Any guesses? Solitaire. Yes. Wow. Who said that? Wow. Yeah, who said Monica. that? Monica said oh. that. Oh, Monica. Oh, Monica. Yes. Oh, well. Okay. Right. Why didn't you get one at the Beauville Slough this year, Monica? Too windy. Sorry, John. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, yes, and and that's as good as it gets. It's good. At, I have a saying for photos like this, which is good enough for iNaturalist. Um, <laughs> and I, anyway, then I delete immediately. How about that one? Oh, there is a bird in there. I heard that. Yeah, foot. 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 Uh, uh, King Golden King crown kinglet. kinglet. I heard ruby crowned, and that is correct. They do have yellow feet. 
Okay. And uh, there you go. And, yeah. So yeah, they have uh, yellow feet. Yeah, not just not just the palms either. Um, top as well. And there's the typical little bill, and it's not golden crown because it doesn't have the white uh, through the eye. So yeah, it's a ruby crown kinglet. How about this one? This is not cropped. You see a bird. Oh, yes. Oh, would be a pie bill grebe. A pie bill grebe. So you can see it's yeah. taking off, and there it is. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> that is an honest to goodness, <laughs> that is honest to goodness shot. That is not cropped. <laughs> <laughs> I saved it just for you. <laughs> I heard pie bill grebe. Is that bound end? Pardon? Is that the southbound end? Yes, it is. It's the, north, it's the south end of a northbound bird. <laughs> yes. um, it was at Williams Lake in the summer. There you oh. It was a very cooperative Sora, despite our wow. initial encounter. Wow, that's yeah. a beautiful picture. Yeah, it, uh, as I said, it was unusually cooperative. You know, we have them around here and there. We had uh, one in Blakeburn. Um, Thank you in the summer and there's been one off and on seen at the pond in uh, in Colony Farm as well. They, you know, mild winters are better for them. They can get kind of frozen out and that can be a little rough on them, but they're around and uh, seldom seen, but sometimes they really do show up. Uh, where am I here? That one. Oh. Squirrel? Squirrel. Yeah, it's a squirrel. Douglas squirrel. Douglas squirrel it is. Uh, aren't I good? <laughs> Victoria told you I was a good photographer right at the beginning. And just, <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, <laughs> so I mean, there's so that that photo's wrong, like in so many different ways. That uh, <laughs> <laughs> a number of mistakes I made with that. Uh, this is the last one. Oh, darling, this hey. is the uh, yeah. hemlock loopers. Fox bill. European loopers. starling. I like thinking out of the European box. European starling. Uh, um, European starling it is. Wow. Oh, that's nice, yeah. ah. That was wow. in, uh, when was that now? I guess it was in the fall at um, Blakeburn. Uh, lagoons, there was a, this uh, tree was full of, full of all kinds of birds, waxwings uh, as well. Um, Beautiful. Uh, so. They're nice. They're a, you know, the winter plumage here is, um, well, they're a pretty nice looking bird in summer as well, but the winter plumage. Yeah. Um, so that is that, and I am just going to say thank you to uh, Victoria, um, the various leaders, and of course all of the participants and all of you for tuning in. I uh, promised I did want to keep this short and sweet, so happy to have questions and sort of turn things back over to uh, to the organizers. Yeah, I just want to say on behalf of the participants, the one word that comes to mind after your presentation, John, is fun. Uh, I, I don't mm -hmm. think I've ever heard so much laughter on a Zoom meeting before. And I think our experiment, we had a little bit of trepidation. The experiment to have the unmuted mics seemed to work really well. And it's credit to you and it's credit to Victoria for pulling this all together. So on behalf of the participants and everybody that uh, took part in the Christmas bird count, thank you very much, John, for just a, a wonderful presentation. Just Thanks, John. Good work. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd now like to uh, just turn it over to an open mic if people want to contribute in terms of interesting wildlife sightings. Uh, I, since I have the floor, I'll be the first to start. Uh, during this past week, we've had the pleasure of seeing a total of four river otters, three at Colony Farm and one at Blakeburn. And I must say that the bullheads, fish, and Blakeburn thought they were pretty safe because they were too large for some of the mergansers, even the common. But lo and behold, uh, yesterday we saw a river otter enjoying one of the largest bullheads I've seen. So <laughs> be careful, bullheads, the river otter's back. Wow, wow. Hmm. Was that on the west pond or the east pond, John? It was on the east pond. He had the pond to himself, and he was just enjoying himself, or she. So we walked around the, uh, we were at the lagoons this afternoon. We counted eight male megansers, the common megansers. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, so. yeah, it's a sea of white over there. The the common yeah. mergansers, uh, they're they're lovely to see. Last week at Blakeburn, we saw a cormorant. Uh, double crested, yes. Uh, someone recently had a picture. In fact, I think Brian Ness might have captured a picture of the cormorant uh, eating one of the delightful invasive fish species in the ponds. <laughs> And mm -hmm. someone's put up a bird feeder, so we suddenly have about eight red-winged blackbirds hovering in a tree at the main entrance. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that where they were? Mm. A anything else that was uh, either common or unusual? That out, of the, uh, up? out of the 463 geese that we counted in the inlet during the bird count, we had one Canada goose that had a brown head on it. It still had the white patches on its cheeks and that but the top of the head was uh, really uh, uh, blonde colored and the mm -hmm. whole bird was very light in color, but it was definitely a uh, Canada goose. And there was only the one out of the 463 there. Were there any cackling yeah. geese in among those 467? I know you've got such really good sharp eyes. I don't think I, I noticed that. Uh, Judy, did you? No, I didn't. No, we did not notice cackling. Well, the patience to count 467, credit to you? Oh, 463, John. Oh, oh, yeah, oh okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> we were, um, went and had lunch at uh, Osprey Village, and uh, on our way there, there's a um, murky little pond where they're doing all that construction, and how many cackling geese did you think there were? Well, the total together the both sides were two about two hundred we thought. Yeah. Oh. A whole batch whole batch of them mixed in with well a handful of, of Canada geese. Right. Yeah. If you want to see cackling geese, we recently participated in the Langley bird count as well. And uh, in several of the fields in Langley there was what was it, Christina, over five hundred cackling geese, mm -hmm. a few gulls and some crows. Mm. I was walking uh, Rocky Point Park today, and I first at the water noticed these expanding circles, three of them, and then a duck appeared, and I didn't recognize it, and uh, another one, and then it was diving down again and stayed down for quite a long time, and then, so there were three of them, and they were really diving, I, they were smaller than uh let me see they were they weren't a, a regular sign <laughs> that's not a very good description <laughs> uh but i i, I had don't think i'd seen that before <laughs> so i took pictures from my phone but um i could look at them but i haven't seen and the the circles so you know so they had obviously with their movement it caused these expanding circles on the top of the water so i watched all three of them and so there was just the three ducks that were diving for something there. <laughs> what, what was the area again you saw them in? At Rocky Point Park. Oh. Uh, yeah. Just okay. Well, if people happen to be out there, maybe they can keep an eye out for those. Mm -hmm. The cackling goose or geese, um, when I was coming back from Minicata and crossing that Broadway, that pathway that goes over to Broadway from yep. uh, Coast Meridian, there was a, a, a flock overhead and I'm sure there were cackling geese. And it was like the crows. You know how the, the crows gather? That was the same effect with these geese. There was like hundreds of them all of a sudden mm -hmm. passing over. So they could have been coming from Pitt Meadows, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't realize when it comes to cackling geese uh, uh, that there are several different subspecies within the cackling geese. And so you oh. can get even miniature cackling geese oh, and yeah. others that are nearly the same size as uh, Canada geese. And it's only when they're in the field together sometimes it's, if you don't hear what they sound like, it can be challenging to identify them. So that's a good sighting. That's great. Anyone else? Um, I've had uh, uh, downy woodpecker at a regular basis. Oh, mm, lovely. Uh, okay. Coming to our suet feeder along with a red breasted nuthatch. Oh, that's nice, Sam. Yeah. Yes, yes. I saw two Merlins uh, over Good Neighbor Park, just up on Foster Avenue. And they quite often nest there several years. They have nested there before. So I'm kind of hoping they'll decide to nest there again. Well, mm -hmm. that, that brings up a really good point. I've noticed with a lot of the raptors, 
they seem to be in mating behavior already. I guess it's this time of the year that they're circling together or calling each other or doing acrobats. So that's encouraging to hear. Two Merlins. Excellent. Yeah. Exciting. My daughter and I are hiking okay. in my yard quite a bit lately. And on count day, when I came in from the trails, right in my backyard, there was a sharp shinned hawk on my fence eating a little bird. Oh, dear. Mm -hmm. oh. Uh, nature can be cruel sometimes. Those, yeah, I, they're so agile. You can see them, the way they fly through strata complexes and neighborhoods. It's amazing to see. Thanks, Susan. There was someone else that had just started. Uh, Oh yeah, uh, my daughter and I were walking over towards Simon Fraser and uh, there was this terrible squawking in the bushes and out flew a Cooper's, I think it was a Cooper's hawk carrying some little bird and right behind him chasing him was, in, I think it was some sort of an owl. Uh, <laughs> yeah. saying, that was my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> There's another bird that uh, we get at Blakeburn quite a bit. There's a resident Cooper's and it just amazes me for a relatively large bird compared to some of the others, how agile they are and how fast they are. It's, and, and I've seen one of them actually drop right on top of a widgeon and drag it along and try to drown it in the, in the oh, 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 wet riparian area. Wow, wow. Anything well, else? I have a question for, Vic I don't know if it's Victoria or John Reynolds. I mean, we, there's lots of birds we didn't see this year, but are there any sort of ones, surprising ones that did get seen on the count. John, are you still on? Yeah, I am, and I'm just trying to think. Mm -hmm. um, so we often miss sharp shinned hawk, and, um, and so, uh, and I, I, in fact, I should have thrown that photo, the photos in that you sent, um, Susan, they were um, good photos of the one. Um, and so I think we had two of those, Victoria? I think that? so, yes. Yeah, yeah, so that's one I think we've probably missed. I certainly rarely see them on the count. You also mentioned, John, uh, the number of trumpeter swans that you saw. Yeah, so... Yeah, I, you had a very good sighting. How many did you I, see? Uh, did I think Wichita? I had something like 76 or 79. Wow. At, uh, Gee, really? Uh, and there were six downstream from there that someone yeah, else that sighted? Right? I think well, so. that's a very good number of trumpeter mm -hmm. swans. Yeah, you know, it's funny, too, because when, when I was looking at them, this was up at the... Um, Widgeon um, slew. slew. Yeah. No, I was thinking, you know, they're a very long lived bird and they're very traditional. They would be coming back to the same place each year, uh, you know, in the winter and summer. And so there's a very good chance I've seen these very same individual birds now, you know, every year for many, many years. It's, uh, it's kind of funny that uh, we get them that way. And I've talked to Bob Edward, who has a property along there. And, you know, he's been living there literally all his life and he is still excited by those by the swans. Like, it's the first thing he mentioned mm -hmm. when, I, when I chatted with him. Anyone else? We've had some really good, interesting sightings. Did anybody else have a huge number of European starlings at Colony Farm West? This year we had, Angela and I had 510, and the highest number we wow. mm -hmm. ever had before was 72, two years ago. So it was just this huge group What's that called, Angela? Uh, murmuration. Murmuration, thank you. <laughs> and it was just this huge murmuration of starlings that just kept moving around Colony Farm West over and over and over again. They would just erupt from the field. So we were just rather surprised to have so many. Did anybody else have an unusually high number of starlings? I know it's a common bird, but it was a really un uncommonly high number for us, highest ever. Yeah, Colin, you get the prize for the number of highest number of starlings this year. <laughs> we didn't really, we, we didn't want that. <laughs> Thank you anyway. <laughs> you had your own special category. John just didn't mention it. <laughs> to me, they're kind of the rats of the bird world. Yeah. So to get 510 feathered rats was uh, not too exciting, but interesting. <laughs> yeah, it brought our numbers up. <laughs> It was funny because we had the lowest number of species ever, but the highest number of individuals. But it was just because of those doggone starlings. So <laughs> anyway, that was our our doggy thrill. So I, I had a question that um, on our count along the Pitt River and Fraser River, our, our species count, you know, was sort of similar to normal, but uh, number of birds was way down. So I was wondering how how was that across the board. I think it's safe to say that certainly on our count, 
uh, we saw far less songbirds, even around the few feeders that are along the section. And mm -hmm. yes, uh, we had a reasonable number of species, but the, the count was well down. And I'm wondering if you almost have to put in asterisks beside the count because of the wet, windy conditions. Some of the birds were likely just more hidden. Well, we accidentally counted on Tuesday because when I read, saw the video, I thought we could go three days before or three <laughs> days after. And we um, <clears throat> counted a lot more birds on the, <clears throat> we picked Tuesday because it was quite nice out that day. And there was a lot more, we sighted a lot more on the Tuesday than Saturday for sure. Mm. That's a that's a really good point, Edie. Uh, we actually did the same thing. We were so jealous of uh, the team that split up and went on the Colony Farm North Loop compared to our South Loop. That Christine and I went a couple of days later in that sunshine, and we ha ended up getting one of our record number for the winter, uh, thirty species. Mm -hmm. So I, I certainly think that uh, weather, and as John pointed out not just the weather, but the combination of the intense rain with wind. And it's, it's hard, particularly for small birds. You know, once they get wet and cold, it's, it's just a challenge. They're, they're not wanting to come out. And the um, pictures were really good on Tuesday too, that June took. They were much better than, well, you couldn't even take your camera out some of the times on Saturday, but on Tuesday, got a lot of good ones. Sorry to interrupt, team. Um, Jeff's just uh, messaged me and said he's got some uh, photos he'd like to show. So uh, I'm just going to uh, make him co-host. Uh, Jeff, you, if you can hear me, I know your microphone isn't working, but I'm going to uh, share my share, give you co-host, and then you can um, you can show your photos. Uh, just let me find you in the list. Um, just while uh, Brian's doing this, um, I'll prepare a, a written summary of the count with information such as we've just been discussing, like the number of individual birds this year compared to previous years. I can tell you right now, our average over the last uh, 24 years or so is around 10,500 individual birds that we count on our side of the river. And anyone want to guess what we got this year? 3,000. <laughs> Higher. 8,400. Okay, you're, you're wow. getting close. We got yeah. six, 6,800 this year. Oh. <laughs> so we're down, we're down, that's a significant uh, drop in the number of birds. But anyway, watch your uh, February newsletter and there'll be a, a, a summary of uh, some of the uh, low lights of this year's count. Well, thank goodness for the starlings. They really yes, I, right. the yeah, I was delighted, Colin. <laughs> well, really we, well if done. We, if we deduct the 438 extra starlings more than what we've ever had, we definitely had the lowest number of individuals ever in the last eight years that I've yeah. been doing it. Yeah. Well, oh. one team only got, I think, eight species. Was it Lena? You got eight species? Okay. That's so, some great photographs. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So Jeff's now sh uh, sharing his screen. I'm not sure Jeff's microphone is working, but. <laughs> wow. Wow. Goodness, that's an optimistic heron. So Can this is along the Coquitlam River. Oh. Mm. Best fake. <laughs> More to come, I think. A anyone else? Any other interesting wildlife sightings? Uh, when we recently were walking to Mulville Slough, we had the pleasure of, uh, I had misidentified them. I thought they were house finches, but they were actually purple finches and it never ceases to amaze me the importance of the Pacific crab apple and other fruit trees at this time of the year for the birds. It was just a mm -hmm. glorious color of the purple finches, but so many other species rely on, on that those trees for sources of nutrients at this time of the year. Okay, well, uh, perhaps at this point I can turn it over to Victoria, just to give us a final couple of closing comments. Okay, thank you. Thank you, John. Um, 
I think, yes, we are going on to 8.30, and we did want to keep this uh, roughly an hour because of all this Zoom fatigue that we all seem to be suffering. Um, I did want to remind you, um, you probably noticed in your January newsletter that um, our speaker for next month is another fantastic speaker, and that's Sid Cannings. And he's going to be talking about the bumblebees of BC, big, bumbly, and beleaguered is the uh, title of his talk. So that will be another fabulous presentation that you won't want to miss. And I think, unless I've forgotten something, um, I think uh, that's in the There is one other thing. I just wanted to put yeah. a plug in for uh, any members in BMN that are interested in getting more involved in BMN activities. We are actively recruiting people for our Education and Conservation Committee it seems that there's an increase in demand, uh, especially for Zoom meetings, but also for people to assist with school projects and presentations as well. We've got several major projects on the go right now and several others coming up. And we certainly could use some additional support. And your commitment doesn't have to be a great deal. It's just uh, enjoying being outdoors and sharing some of the information you have. So if you are at all interested, please let Lori or myself know, and we'd love you to have you join the committee. Yes, and it's a great way to learn more about uh, the nature all around us too. Yes. And great people to work with. I mean, look at us all. Oh. Every one of us is a <laughs> lot of fun. So yeah, it's great. So I also want to um, thank the Alouette Field Naturalists for joining us this evening too. That's been a fabulous addition to our, our Zoom meetings. So another advantage of holding these and everybody else, all the um, uh, observers on the count who aren't BMN members, please consider becoming a BMN member um, if you want to join our Zoom meetings. These are only open to uh, BMN members. Uh, so, Victoria? Um, oh, yes. Victoria, may I raise a, just a couple of things? Um, of course, Mike. Um, uh, one of them is a, the article on the um, news the other night. Uh, from uh, Wildlife Rescue mm. about the salmonella going around and, and and she wasn't really advocating using bird feeders. Is I'd like to see what sort of opinions you have on that one or anyone else. I, I think that the issue was that people were using bird feeders but not cleaning them mm -hmm. and yeah. the bacteria has a chance to develop. So that yeah. and the same with hummingbird feeders. You can actually uh, develop a bacteria that can harm the hummingbirds. So it's more incumbent upon people not just to, to, to clean them properly is I think more the, the more important message. Be a bit more diligent about things. Perhaps. Absolutely, because yeah. bird feeders at this time of the year are critical, especially when it gets cold or wet. Yeah. And so I think there was mixed messages. The, the fear was that you no, know, pull in all your bird feeders, but it's really just more important from what I can understand to clean them regularly and use good quality seed. If mm -hmm. anyone else has something to contribute to, please feel free. So uh, just out of curiosity, how do you clean yours? I just use soap and water. Should I be bleaching? Um, I think the recommendation with, if you see any sick birds is to use, is to use dilute bleach. Wipe the feeder down with dilute bleach, especially where the birds put their feet and beaks and, and then rinse it off because that will be sure to get rid of the uh, salmonella. Okay. So, Actually, we have uh, Liz, Funstrom, right here. I'm looking right at her, formerly of Wildlife Rescue. Did you want to add anything, Liz? Well, part of the problem with the um, siskins is they come in such large groups, so and they all come at once onto the feeders. So, of course, if you've got one sick one, it's very, very easy for them to trample uh, where the others have been feeding and poop and whatever. Mm -hmm. And so it's very, very easy for the uh, virus to get past. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, the advice about keeping your feeders very clean is important. And uh, perhaps if you're having a lot of problems, do take them down. If you're finding you're getting a lot of sick birds, it might be better to just take them down temporarily or feed something else for the other birds, something yeah. like perhaps, so yeah. And, uh, uh, another, another thing too, Victoria, is uh, there was a suggestion made to me uh, today, one of our group, uh, whether, what the interest would be in, in uh, doing a similar bird count in say late spring or mid spring. I know there is one, I think put out by the 
Birds Canada already, but I'm not. Sh I'm not too sure. Does anyone else know better about that? Or got any thoughts on doing something like that? Great Canadian bird count in in February. The feeder walk. Yeah, the feeder count. Feeder count. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think Jonathan was uh, talking more about um, May, early May or mid-May or something in that line. Well, I think some groups, uh, I know at Colony Farm, there's been a small group of dedicated volunteers that actually do a monthly raptor count throughout the year. They call it a raptor count, but they count all birds. And we have several of our volunteers, uh, Liz and Lori, go to Como Lake on a monthly basis. So it, it doesn't have to be a formal count but it's certainly the more information you have and putting it on eBird and iNaturalist benefits everyone. Maybe, maybe I should get uh, uh, maybe I should get Jonathan to um, send something into your your website perhaps and maybe elaborate a bit more on what he what he intends to do. Certainly he's welcome yes, to do that. Yes why don't you um, put him in touch with with me Mike. Okay. That would sure. be great. Okay Victoria. Jonathan Smythe is his name. Okay great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to say good night to everyone. I don't know what the rest of you are going to do. Um, thank you so very much for joining. Uh, I've really, really enjoyed this last hour. It's, I Honestly, I haven't laughed so much in a long time, and I needed that laugh. <laughs> Thanks very much, John thank Reynolds you. and John yes. Saramba and Brian. Thank you and very much, everybody. Everyone thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. 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 Good night